All right. We're good. Yeah, we're good. All right. Welcome to It Is What It Is. I'm Sean Marie. I'm Jean. I'm sick as fuck. I'm trying not to sit too close to you. Right. I fucking... I'm going to die. I'm just going to die. And that's why I just keep telling Eric I'm going to die. Do you need a movie day with pajamas and cocoa and just... I get to stay home and watch the 49er game. So yeah. I'm just gonna. No, chill. make some chicken noodle soup tomorrow. There you go. I should. Yeah. I should. We are gonna do the Mary Bell story, though. Mary Still. Bell. She was, oh my goodness. That little girl? Yeah. Well, today she still lives among us. She's not dead. Yeah. So that's kind of creepy. And she doesn't go by Mary Bell anymore. Any, uh, Mary Bell anymore. Yeah. Sorry, I know it says it sounds like I said Melanie, but I really didn't. Sick. <laughs> Sinus issues will bring you some Vicks. <laughs> Dude, if I could, like, get sick without having, like, congestion uh -huh. or whatever that's called. Uh -huh. And it doesn't feel like there's, like, a... A bison on your chest? Yeah. Yeah. Not my chest, like my face. Oh, well, that's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like if that like if I could just have like the cough, the sore throat, mm -hmm. the achies, whatever, I'm cool. I can rock it. Or right here. Yeah. yeah. But like, I can't breathe. I sound like I'm trying to be like all hot and mysterious, and I'm not. Have you gotten the laryngitis yet with your kids? No. Oh, they mock you. They'll irritate you just so you try and yell at them, and then they laugh at you. It's hard. Yeah. I've had learned that it's a few a few times. The boys loved it. So they'll try and make you scream at them. And then laugh at you. And then they're cute, so... Yeah, no, she... <laughs> My kids don't, don't fuck with they'll me. They'll mock you. <laughs> they like to love me. And keep me on their team. Yeah. It's only girls in my house, so... Well, and you make we the rule cookies, the roof. so... Yeah. Poor Eric is... Well, I mean, there's my brother, of course, but... There's still more girls. We outnumber, empower, and we do what we want. And I hope to God none of my kids ever turn out to be a psychotic little asshole like Mary Bell. Ah, uh, I'm not... I'm wondering why she wasn't just placed in a mental health facility for the remainder she was too of young. her days. She was too young. Okay, but at that age, that should be a major red flag that let's do some counseling no, and at some therapy. No, and... yeah, at that age, they were like, well, we're just going to fix you and put you back out there. All right, well, let's talk. What's the let's time frame? What let's tell you. Well, hold on. Okay. We haven't even gotten into it yet, so hold on. Okay, and I know this is kind of a preview for everybody who listened to the faith to the other one, mm -hmm. to the Bloody Marys. Yep, last week's episode. Yeah, but this little psycho, really, she's just too precious. Like you can tell in her pictures that she has no soul. Those pictures were all of those ladies. Dude, I don't My know why, goodness. but like I could look in pictures back in the like. Oh, the old time photos. Well, anybody's picture. Mm-hmm. The first, like, the, I stare at people's eyes in pictures for so long. Because you can tell so much by a person's eyes. And some people's eyes are just dead. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they're just there. I don't give a crap eyes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so, on May 26th of 1957, an unwed, mentally unstable, Mary, I mean... Mother, uh, God damn. Sorry, guys. Ha. <laughs> Mentally unstable Betty. Had a baby. Had a baby. Because that's a good idea. Yeah. And she was only <laughs> 17 years old. Oh, honey. Daddy's name is Bill. So Bill and Betty have, have a, a baby. baby. Yeah. She did marry the dad for like a smidge only because that was like. Proper. It was legit. the 50s. Well, like. This is in Newcastle, England, too. And where they lived was, like, they called it, like, the rats. Something. England or New England? England. Oh, okay. Yeah, in Newcastle. And they lived in, like... Slums? The worst part of the ghetto. Mm hmm Like, that's where she was brought up. And back then, before Mary did what she did, all the little hood rat kids would hang out on the street. Mm-hmm. 
and people would sleep with their doors open. People are fucking crazy. I wouldn't be able to sleep. But people sleep with their doors open mm-hmm. and unlocked. And, like, everybody trusts everybody. Tell a little Mary. Anyway. Um, the dad was unstable. He was always out of work. He was a low-time criminal. He was, like, known for, like, robbing and being a menace to society. Mm-hmm. So, Betty would go and stay with friends, family, acquaintances. Mary, I mean, yeah, Mary once gave her to a lady outside of an abortion clinic. And was like, here, take it. There's the baby? Yeah, take it. Too late to abort this. Just take it. Mm -hmm. And then she tried to adopt adopt her out once, too, and then changed her mind. So, these people kept bringing this baby back to this lady? Yeah. Oh. So, this set... The thing says that her home was filthy and sparsely furnished, but then I watched the documentary and a bunch of people from the hood were interviewed Mm -hmm. from the old stomping grounds, Mm -hmm. and they all said, like, shit, we barely had a pot to piss in. So this wasn't, like, I don't know, if you read the article, you look at it, and you're like, oh, this broke-ass bitch, but if you watch what everybody else in that community was going through, this was not an uncommon thing. Yeah. They just... The other houses were just cleaner with their one cup, you know? Yeah. Betty Betty was a little bit of a slobber. And so was good old Bill. Well, he was probably lazy if she was the main worker. So, at school, Mary was known as a chronic liar and a disturbed pupil. (laughs) Pupil. On occasion... Mary would voice her desire to hurt people, to make little things hurt. And she was angry. So, dude, okay, I'm not even there yet. I gotta slow the fuck down because I'm about (laughs) to just jump to some shit because her schooling, this is when some shit should have been, like back then I believe you could have beat a child in school, am I Mm -hmm. right? No one was beating this baby, and they should have been. They were probably scared she hit him back. I would be, too. I ain't even trying to lie. So, um, the crew, the cruel age, it surfaced. It mm. manifested. She acted upon this urge to hurt little people. On May 11th of 1968, when Mary Bell and Norma Bell, okay, Norma is the friend that you hang out with because she is the... I'm not trying to be offensive. She's the dumb one. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? She's the kind of listen and do whatever you need her to yeah. do. Yeah. She's the gullible. Follow you around. Yeah. Yep. She's always down to ride even though she doesn't know what the fuck's going on. Mm-hmm. That's Norma. So Norma probably would, would have been diagnosed with some form of autism, I'm sure. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. She was just like. She was slow. Slower. She, yeah, she like slower, but I just call her the dumb friend. You know what I mean? So I like, calm down with the fucking. On the spectrum and shit. Jesus Christ. I didn't specify a spectrum. She, I'm not trying to be rude. She was just <laughs> like. Was that rude? I don't know, because I feel like now everybody's going to be like, oh, she hates dumb people. No. Dumb people. Or like, she thinks people are dumb. You're okay. explaining Norma's. That's just how they described her. You know what I mean, too? Like, this is from them. They were like, she was a dumb friend. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. They were playing with a three-year-old boy on the top of a Newcastle air raid shelter. Like, a fucking broken-down-ass building. Yeah, Mm -hmm. from the war. The boy fell and was hurt really bad. And that was... That was written off as an accident, like a playground accident. Because all the kids played... That's what the kids played in, was abandoned buildings. Unstableness. And unsupervised, it sounds like. Yeah, and unsupervised. Would you send your... You just you send your three-year-old down to the park over here while you're making dinner? Well, no, but oh, the yeah. lady... One of the ladies on the documentary said that this part of the hood... Everybody was everybody's mama. Everybody was everybody's daddy. Uh-huh. If you saw that kid acting out, you can beat the hell out of that kid and send him home. Yeah. 
and that mom wouldn't care. She'd be like, well, good, I'm going to beat you again. Yep. You know what I mean? This was a tight neighborhood. That's how moms do anyway. <laughs> yeah, they said that they were like, they had each other's backs. It was a bunch of working moms. Yeah. Living in the slums. So it was really, older kids were out there. So it was kind of like, don't let these little ones fucking die. Mm-hmm. We'll feed y'all when we can feed y'all. Because mm -hmm. they were prostitu uh, prostituting. Oh. Out of their homes. Yeah. So. so they had to play outside. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Some kids, I mean, Maryville was objected to that lifestyle. At four years old, she was a working person. Wow. In that industry, in the sex industry. Her mom was pimping her out. Oh and God. her mom was like, her, it was like an act. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Her mom was just not very nice. Like, it's... That little girl grew up very poorly, very horribly, and it's really... It's a shame none of the neighbors kind of swooped up. Well, no, it was going was on like, all the time. Our extra this was like the hood. Like, if this wasn't happening in your house, you were the weird one on the block where they were like, what the fuck's wrong with you guys? Huh. Why don't your mama love you? You know what I mean? This was the hood. Like, they were showing clips of it. Uh-huh. And mind you, this is after the war and everything, so there's fucking demolished just everywhere. Yeah, London was hit pretty good. Yeah. There was... England. England and all that shit, dude. Mm. It was horrible. Those people lived in horribleness. Like, they didn't even have washing machines. They all had to meet up at, like, this big all fucking uh, sink washing area to do their laundry and shit. Like, these... They were just living to live, dude. You know yeah, what I mean? Survive. Yeah. And I'm not saying prostituting your kid is legit by any means. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not trying to justify her. I'm just trying to describe the time yeah. that this was happening in. It's fucked up. Mm -hmm. No four-year-old baby should fucking go through some shit. So. Are you really paying attention to it? You I don't know? know. So, um. On May 12th, a mother of three young girls, dude, goes to the cops and tells the cops, Mary Bell, sorry, Mary Bell, um, attacked and was choking her children. Just because she wanted to see what it felt like, probably. Probably. Mm -hmm. And they interviewed one of the girl, the girl that it happened to, mm -hmm. and she said Norma was scared. Like, Norma was there, but Norma was scared of what Mary was doing. Yeah. So that also helped in the end on what happens to Norma. That story helps Norma. So, um, she was interviewed and lectured by the cops. About choking the other kids out? Yeah, but I guess at school, this was a common thing with her. At school. Because she was a disturbed pupil. So peop she would tell kids, she'd be like, oh, you got a sore throat? Does your throat hurt? I can fix it. And that's when she would start choking him. And she'd just get tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. The um, mortician, though, from this case said that if her victims were any more than four years old, that she wouldn't have been able to strangle them. Because she was 10 herself? 11? 10. Ugh. Her killing, her first killing was 10. But anyway, so yeah, she was known, known as a little fuck everywhere. Cop school, so, and still. No one's doing anything. Nobody really looked at it. No, yeah. no one's doing anything. Everybody's just like, oh, that Mary, she's a sassy one, I tell you. Hmm. She plays rough. She's a rough one. No one really cared. So, um,. On May 25th, the, it was a day before her 11th birthday, two boys in an abandoned house found the corpse of four-year-old Martin Brown lying in an upstairs. Mar uh, Mary and Norma followed the boys inside the building, and they had to be ordered out by the police. Like, they would not leave the crime scene, Mary huh. and Norma. And... Oh, I guess I have to tell you what happened first. 
So. Martin. Yeah, he. it was assumed that he had swallowed some pills that were discarded in the building. Mm -hmm. Upstairs, they found a little pill bottle. And so... They ruled it as, like, kind of like a oopsie. Mm -hmm. But, um, so... On the 26th, okay, the day after, Norma's dad catches Mary fucking choking the shit out of Norma, like attacking her. So he slaps fucking Mar Mary in the face but and yeah. he's like a little bitch psh, psh, and sends her ass home. So later that, that day, Norma goes back to hang out with Mary. Yeah. Because that's what you do when your friend beats you up, <coughs> chokes you. Can you're terrified of your friend. You kick it with a bitch. So a local nursery school, which is just an elementary school, mm -hmm. was vandalized. Cops found notes saying, mm, Fuck off. We murder. Watch out. Fanny and faggot. I'm quoting motherfuckers. And we did murder Martin Brown. Fuck off, you bastard. Those are the notes these girls wrote? That they left us the school. Huh. And like, and they destroyed the school. They went in and fucking tipped us over and ransacked through papers and had a happy old time. I almost just said gay old time and then I just said it, so I don't fucking care. Anyway. That means happy. It does. Four days later, dude. They knew the Brown family, okay? Like I said, everybody's from the same hood. So they knew the Browns. And they they went to the Browns' house and knocked on the door and said that they wanted to see him. And the mom was confused because she knew the girls knew that he was dead. Uh-huh. And so the mom said that she looked, <coughs> looked at Mary... And told Mary, like, no, you can't. He he died. And they say, I know he's dead. I want to see him in his coffin. And every time she would run into them previous to this encounter, mm -hmm. they'd ask her, like, how do you feel? Do you miss him? Are you sad? Like, they'd ask her weird questions, and at the time, she thought it was weird, but she also thought that these were children just not understanding death. Experiencing it for the first yeah. time, yeah. And, like, their friend died. Mm -hmm. So, she just thinks that these little girls don't know how to properly act. She said she slammed the door in their face yeah. and had, like, a mental breakdown on the other side. Yeah. Oh, my God. What would you even say? What would you do? I know. I don't even know. I don't even know. So on May 31st, the school decided we're going to get an alarm system because someone keeps breaking in here and making a mess. So the cops crash in the school in the middle of Mary and Norma destroying the school. Uh-huh. Because they set off the alarm? Yep. Girls weren't thinking about it or what? Yep. The girls were saying that they didn't break in before. This was the first time Sorry. they were released back to their parents. Because they were like, oh, we just barely did it. Like, we got the idea from those people. Oh. Well. Sounds like the cops didn't really want to deal with this kid. Send her home. It's less paperwork. Everybody said that she was scary to be around. Like, she just gave off bad juju, creepy girl vibes. Oh. So, anyway, uh, on July 31st, 1968, the disappearance of three-year-old Brian Howe in Newcastle, a search immediately started. Same neighborhood? Was Yeah. Different kid? Yeah. Hmm. So, the search started, and Mary told Brian's sister that he might be playing on a heap of concrete blocks that had been dumped on a vacant lot. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And that was, in fact... Exactly where it was. Where his little body was found. Among the, amongst the slabs. So she was excited to see everyone's reaction. Yeah. And it was a manual strangulation. He had puncture marks on his thighs and all of, on some spots on his sweet little legs. His stomach had been mutilated with a razor and a pair of scissors that the cops found at the scene. The medical examiner said it had to have been a child because there was nothing, no markings on him. Like, even his mom said when she saw him, like, nothing was wrong with him except for he had a little bit of blood coming out of his mouth. But that was it. He looked normal. Like he was sleeping. Huh. So, um... So he tells the cops, you guys probably need to look for a kid that did this. There was an N carved in while he was not completely dead. Mm -hmm. And then she went back later and put it into an M. To fix it. Yeah, so that was done post-mortem. And she cut his hair with the scissors. Like, patches of his hair were cut. Just to keep keepsake, maybe? No, just mm. to be a bitch. Yeah, that's right. I called an 11-year-old girl a bitch. Fight me. So, um... Little Forest was used. The, they had no idea. They were like a kid. Okay. So they go to the neighborhood. And they start talking to all the kids. And being like, alright, little shady fuckers. Everybody line up. Yeah. Who amongst you is a bad kid? All they have to do is look at their reports. And the school's reports. Jesus. They'll tell them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, they all say, well, you know who we think is a bitch? (laughs) Mary fucking Bell. Yeah. She's a smidgen of a bitch. She probably done did it. If it was anybody... I'd ask Mary. Mm. So they go to Mary. And they know Mary and Norma are deuce deuce and a boo. Mary says, I saw an older boy abusing Brian. Like, that's what I saw. Yeah. And then the cops couldn't talk to her anymore because Mary's dad said, you ain't fucking talking to her because obviously she's a fucking dick. Like, he knew. Uh He had to have known. Because I think that's the only reason I wouldn't let my kid talk to him. The cops? Mm Mm-hmm. So, they're like, oh, you know who we can talk to? Norma. Norma. Norma Bates. Just kidding. (laughs) Anyway. So, they go to Norma. And she's like, fuck, you guys want to hear a story? Yeah. Mary's fucking crazy and then this sweet little boy that was playing nearby he was nine years old he did have the mind of a four-year-old but he saw the whole thing her last killing he witnessed that so he testified against her too so um she broke down and told the story of her killing the boys at trial December 17th of 1968, Norma was acquitted of all charges. They deemed her to be mentally unable to be charged with that. Yeah. Um, Mary Bell, though, she was convicted on two counts of manslaughter. Mary was described by the court as an intelligent, manipulative, and dangerous. She had classic symptoms of a psychopath. She was a problem inmate. She went to... They she, didn't want to send her to prison prison. Was she because she was so people? young. Yeah. Mm-mm. No? Mm-mm. Huh? No, because they wanted to rehabilitate... They wanted to rehabilitate her. Uh-huh. Like, that was the end goal. Uh-huh. No one wanted to send a fucking 11-year-old to prison. Yeah. So they sent her to a house. Like a boarding house of some sorts for troubled youth... Mm-hmm. And she didn't do good there. It was probably state-run. Probably. 
So, in 1970, she lied about an assault against a guard, but the man was acquitted in the courts in September of 1977. Oh, I'm sorry, no. In 19, 1977, she escaped oh. from Moore Court Open Prison. Yeah. I don't know what that means. But... With another inmate. They were caught three days later. During that time, they had spent the net. Mary was back in the headlines because she was offering a blow by blow detailed description on how she lost her virginity on this escape oh. from prison. Oh. Yeah, she was out there getting dicked in. Hmm. And her mom repeatedly sold stories about her to the press. Oh, really? Yeah. She was like, oh. Made some money? Yeah. She was like, you guys think that this little girl only did that. What the hell does her mom know? She was never around. It doesn't matter. She was getting paid. Who gives a shit? Oh. No one. It doesn't need to be true. Um... She would sell writings and stuff that she claimed that Mary wrote, but Mary did not write them, mm -hmm. according to Mary. She lost her privileges for 28 days for breaking out. It was a bad idea. So She lost privileges for 28 days? Yeah. In 1980, at the age of 23, she was released from prison after serving 12 years. She was granted a new name... And a new start on life. Wait, 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 wait. So that's two lives. Yeah. And 12 years. But all the cops, even in the documentary, said that they didn't believe that she understood what she was doing. The capacity of death. She didn't understand. Which I think is just bullshit. She understood what she was doing. Oh, yeah. But they didn't... She manipulated them. Yeah. So, That's part of her game is yeah. her power and control. And that was part of her deal was that she would be able to get a new life because they didn't want this. Because they knew if she kept Mary Bell, this would haunt her forever. Uh -huh. So the courts were like, well, we're not going to tarnish you like that. When you do your time or whatever, when you get out, you'll get a new name. Mm -hmm. And a new life. Oh, but it doesn't matter. The moms don't get any babies. I mean, they probably had more babies, but it doesn't matter. But anyway, who cares about that? Mary Bell got a new name. Huh. So she got a start in a new life, like I said. She moved back to the tiny side? I don't know. To the fucking side of somewhere in Newcastle. I don't know. She went back home. She lived she there. She went back to the same town? No, outside of it. Huh. They really don't know. She did sell a bunch of stories. Well, maybe they do know, but it was just not in what I read. Uh huh. You know. You didn't buy one of her stories. No. Her pleas of innocence. No. No. So four years after she got out, she had a daughter on May twenty fifth. Oh God, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh. On May twenty fifth of nineteen eighty four, she didn't know anything of her mom's crimes. Nothing until reporters found out where she lived in 1998. And then they were caught leaving their house with bed sheets draped over their heads to leave. Um, Mary's daughter got... Her original deal was that she would be protected. Her identity would be protected until she was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. But on May 21st of 2003... Mary won a high court battle with the high court system to keep her identity protected for life. This is sometimes called to and referred to as the Mary Bell Order. The Lord, the letter, it was later, sorry, it was later updated to include Mary's granddaughter in January of 09, who was only known as Z in the court documents. Huh. Mary's whereabouts are unknown to this very day. Well, she must have stayed out of trouble if the courts approved her yet again another 
name change and right I don't know dude I don't know if there was any more crimes or anything committed the fact that she raised a kid successfully tells you something I think mm. it was like a Hopefully she did everything completely opposite of what her mother did and what her instincts to do are. You know? Yeah. Actually be there, send him to school, make pancakes. Well, she had that life for a while. You know? Until she got found out. But that's just the case of Mary Bell, though. You know, it's just old school, so we just wanted to talk about that. But then I'm going to talk about this because I just, like I said, What's I've been a been a sick little duck so when I don't feel good I watch a bunch of murder shows and lay on my couch while I teach my children to play with my hair anyway that's not weird is it <laughs> so on my Hulu I did the HBO like free week or whatever yeah love it free week trial anyway so I watched a bunch of documentaries and I watched I Love You Now Die. It's about Conrad the Third and Michelle Carter. Okay, so this case is weird. She does end up going to prison. I didn't write down a whole bunch of information, but um really I wrote down their names because I just wanted to vent about it. If Jean finds it interesting, we could do a case on it, I guess, but I don't fucking know. <laughs> dude so this kid's like 18 years old Conrad and he's venting to Michelle they've only met about five times mm -hmm. okay their grandparents or some shit own a summer home on the same fucking whatever so they've only hung out about five times mm -hmm. well and his mom and dad knew that they talked but they didn't know that it was like girlfriend boyfriend some shit like that but it was and he kills himself, right? And the first when you get informed, what he does is he buys a fucking a water pump mm -hmm. and leaves it in his truck running. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's exhaust. He gets it's exhaust poisoning. And. At first, they're like, fuck, this is a really shitty deal. You know, a kid took his life. This is super sad, but we still got to investigate what happened. Mm -hmm. Well, they get Conrad's phone. At the time, when they find Conrad's phone, it's dead. So they're like, well, fuck, now we got to charge it or whatever. Take this back to the station. Yeah, and in his suicide note, he was, I don't... I don't know, dude, well, and I'll tell you why I don't understand where his frame of mind was, but in his suicide note anyway, he wrote down the passwords to everything, his phone, his computer, all of his shit. You know, did the whole apology to the family, whatever, talked to his family and his friends. Anyway, so they charge it, and then they start going through it, and they print out all of his stuff, and they're reading it, and they come across the girlfriend. This is the last person to talk to him. And, uh, the te they start reading the text and they're like, the fuck are we reading? Because she's asking him questions like, are you going to do it today? Are you going to do it in the morning? Are you going to do it at night? Where are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? Today? Oh, there's so she's many ways you can do bitches. it. Yeah, she's like, there's so many ways you can do it. Huh. Do it this way. Do it that way. You could do it this way. You could overdose. You could hang yourself. Shoot yourself. And. She was. What? Dude, she's a. For some, her boyfriend. Yeah. So this is okay. her boyfriend. Okay. So before. Two days before. He finally does this. Um, She's telling these girls. That don't really talk to her. They're friends. But they're not friends. They the know her. She thinks they're friends. Friends and like, of a friend. They yes. even went into court and was like, this bitch is tripping. She's always blowing my phone up. If I don't answer her, she gets crazy. Anyway, she's telling these people, she's like, she told this one girl, she said, Conrad's missing. Two days before this even happens. 
she's so she's doing a dry run they called it to see if like the sympathy would work if it was believable so um so they start reading it some more and there's things and she says things like you're not gonna be in pain anymore you're gonna be fine just go ahead and do it no I love you it's only gonna hurt for a minute yeah it's only gonna hurt for a minute everything's gonna be fine meanwhile she's texting with his fucking family she's like what do you mean you guys can't find Conrad where is he oh no keep me updated if there's anything I can do I'm gonna come over uh -huh. like oh my god she's soaking all this shit up and Conrad's mom do the interviewer and he, she's like this little bitch was weird and at one time she sent Conrad's mom a text saying I tried to save him you tried to save him he couldn't be saved or some shit something along those lines if you guys want the case and I'll print out the fucking text exchange yeah and fucking read it to you but um so Conrad mom gets off the phone and she literally on camera was like I sat there for a minute and then I said what the fuck tried to save him like I didn't know anything was wrong like I didn't try to save him mm -hmm. and as a mom to think that you had to have that thought like I didn't do shit what are you talking about meanwhile she's telling her friends I was on the phone with him when he did it so check this out halfway through this Conrad gets out of his fucking truck because it's a bad idea he lo yeah he doesn't want to do it anymore yeah and she says get Self back in that fucking preservation yeah and she says get back in that fucking truck and kill yourself oh my god over text message? Yeah. Well, no, she's on the phone. Oh. Dude, she stays on the phone and listens to him cry. Listens to him die. Listens to him take his last breath and then stays on the phone for 20 minutes longer to make sure he's dead. And then goes to sleep. And then his family's looking for him. And she's like, I don't know where he is. Oh, you guys can't find him? Oh, no. And then they find him. And they find out that they, obviously, they read the phones, everything else. So they're charging her. She does get charged. And they go to court. And this is the first case where it's like, can what you say in a text message put you in prison? And it can't. When you're encouraging someone to kill yourself, I mean... Like, it, you stepped it, it, over the line. That person, that Conrad, you hang up the phone, you get out of the car, you block the it, you block the person, get a new number. Right. Exit that... Take that person, take your control. I'm big on that. Bullshit. You're going to listen to somebody encourage you to kill yourself? Yeah. Yeah. If that's not a red flag, she helped him plan no. it. She what? helped him plan and it. So is she in jail for and twenty-five egged years? Him on. Because it's so she was only sentenced, unfortunately, to like fifteen months huh. in two thousand and seventeen. I don't know, dude. It's super sad. Hold on, look, look. That's what they look like. That's what she looks like. That's him. Oh, that's right. So she's probably getting out soon then. Probably. Yeah. And like I said, the HBO documentary is called I Love You, Now Die. That's what it's called. I don't understand that. The need to just be... And I understand divorce is messy and ugly. And what heartache. do you mean divorce? A She's, heartache is They're ugly. fucking 18 years old. What? Divorce. We're only dating, bro. Oh, but I'm just saying, what, why did she want him to kill... Was he breaking up with her? No, she just wanted the attention. She wanted everybody to be like, oh my god. Poor you, poor you. After he died, her Facebook was full of like, fly high. And so she does a baseball event, okay, in his honor. Yeah. In her hometown. He's not from there. That's 
miles away from where he's from. Yeah. So her friends, his friends are like asking her, like, dude, move it to his hometown so all of his friends and family can come. Like, it's about him. And she straight up was like, no, dude, it's not. Okay, this is mine. It's all about me. And no. Did they have their own little baseball event? No, they went down there and did hers and were outcast. Even his family was like, his parents were like, that was not for him. Like, that was all for her. She's in every picture, in the center of every picture. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, she's just doing it for attention. Like, she didn't care. She was just like, well, if he wanted to die, he had all the rights to do it. Dude, you fucked up. Planet you seeds. drew the line when he got out of that truck and you told him to get back in there. She drew the line a long ways before that. Well, just, yeah. Just, just, just someone that you're, you're telling that you love. And now you're going to twist it around for them to kill themselves. Yeah. Which, that's going to affect not just you. Well, yeah. And then you have the balls to sit there and text his family before all this shit comes out. About how much you loved him. And his poor mother said, I am so glad my son had someone like you in his life. To that lady? To her. Think of that. Knowing that you told her that. That you told her, I am so glad my son had you. And the whole time, your son would be here today if it wasn't for her. I don't know. When I look at her picture, I find her very ugly. Just because, because you showed me the picture after, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's just, well, evil comes to mind as a word to describe her. I mean, you need that much attention? Yeah. Kind of like the Gypsy Rose mother? What's that yeah, kind of. Yeah. D-D. 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 But yeah, dude, people I have a hard are fucking... time with that personality. And I know that there's personalities out there like that. And I don't mean any disrespect, but you know what? Go find some some way other to vent. Right. Than to just twist and fuck with people. I don't know. Maybe it's because I've been, you know, who wants their head played with and fucked around with? You're telling this person to die? Yeah. <coughs> well... Is an attempted murder 20, 25 years? That's what I'm not understanding. I had 18 months. 18 months. Yeah, but really... So that guy's life is a piece of shit, pretty much. That's what that says. No, it's... it's, it's, it's well, yeah. It's murder! Uh-huh. It was involuntary by its slaughter. That's what she got. Stop. No. Involuntary manslaughter. Yeah, because there wasn't was really... planned out. She had to go get the decorations for her baseball event in a matching outfit. Right. And text the mom just to fuck with the mom's head, too. Dude, I just couldn't imagine that. I would be... Dude, I'm so sorry I'm sniffly, guys. I really am. But like... Not to me, it's next. I can run and get you some. No, okay. okay. To know that, like, I told that person I was thankful for you. That, like, I'm so happy my son had you. And then knowing what you know now, she yeah. probably wants to bash her head in the concrete. Oh, dude, accident. give me five seconds. You know what I mean? That's all you need. Oh, that's all? Yeah. Like, I will come unleashed like a fucking ravaged bear. Though she doesn't deserve to get out. No. She's going to be able to have a life and, you know, have babies. And... Well, you're ugly. Sorry. Dude, that's just it. It's like people could sit there and when say you're that, that like that ugly on the outside or on the inside. inside it it shows. shows. Yeah. Yeah. People, you could be as pretty as you want to be. It doesn't matter. You like your inside beauty shows too. And if you are gorgeous, you could still be the ugliest person on the planet. Because of your insides, dude. If you're nasty, you're nasty. Mm -hmm. It's a personal choice. You go out of your way to be that manipulative. And make everything all about you. Two days before you do a quote-unquote dry run, get the fuck out of here, dude. And then you have to you sit in court. You gotta test the water, you know, with your Well, then you have to sit in court. How embarrassing is it that now you're sitting in court and these girls are going on the stand and they're like, we didn't like her. 
Like, we found her to be obnoxious and annoying. Yeah, I'm gonna clap. <laughs> yeah. <Yay. laughs> yeah, it's horrible. Uh. So, yeah, if you guys want, we can fucking do, like, a little... On Tuesday, I don't know. I don't, I don't really want to but... get her any more attention. Fuck that bitch. But Sorry. yeah, she was a fucking horrible, horrible fucking being. We can talk about it more. About well, it. like, and the bitch. fact that, like, the episode was called I Love You Now Die. Okay, yeah. when I saw that, I was like, ooh. Play. No. Ooh. <laughs> what do we have here? Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then his sweet face pops up on the screen. Yeah, he's a cute kid. And, and my heart broke. Again, I forgot. 18. 18? At the time. 18? Like, yeah, because she was 19 when she was sentenced to like her trial and stuff. Yeah. Just do you a think baby. she learned her lesson? Or do you think she's no. getting another... No, dude, she choked. Dude, her fucking golden. hair was atrocious. Like, she may have had cute outfits. Or whatever. It looked pretty stringy. But her hair, like, the, this one side, like, where her sideburns are, sorry, I know you guys don't care, but it was obnoxiously, like, crooked, and I kept wanting to fix it. Like, why did no one fix it? Well, she was probably, like, you know, got out of Well, that's the shit, no, dude, she was out, she was out on bail. She was from a rich-ass family, and oh. she was balling. So, like, you know what I mean? Fix your fucking hair. Drove me nuts. Every time the court camera went to her, I was like, stop it. Fix her fucking hair. <laughs> it was driving me insane. It's the only thing I could focus on. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. I'm like, help this bitch. Jesus. She's heartless, but good God, fix her hair. But yeah, so that's the little mini story. You're so cute. Of poor Conrad the Third. Conrad the Third. Yeah. Who was a very and, handsome man, and his poor grandpa dude talked about him and broke down in tears. Grandpas aren't supposed to have to go to their grandson's funeral. No. Dude, it was the saddest thing. He was like one of them, like, steamboat peoples or uh -huh. whatever. A boat of some sorts. And he would go to work with grandpa and then his daddy. And then he got his own boating captain license, like, right before all this shit uh -uh, happened. Uh-uh, so he had, Dude, like his whole family future. had... His whole family had no idea that, like, his thoughts were this way. Dude. Only she knew. Those captains make a bunch of money out there. He had a future and everything. It was so sad. And, like, they really was all thought... Was it not up to par for her? No. Dude, that wasn't even it. That wasn't even it. She didn't do it out of, like, oh, I don't like you. She was just like, oh, okay, yeah, if you die, I'm going to get a bunch of attention. So, like, are you going to do it today? Huh. Like, tomorrow? Should I be super sad today? Uh, no, not today. Tomorrow? I'm just checking in on how I'm going to act today. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. And she was like, I need to know what eyeshadow I need to wear. If it's a sad, happy, like, clue me in. And so she fucking ramped on him, and she would get irritated. And some messages were like, you fucking said you were going to do it. So when are you going to do it? Were they in different towns then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This was cyber love. We've only they only met like a handful, like a handful of times. And so Conrad probably was still at home with good relationship with his parents. Or? Yeah. Yeah, and his parents were separated, you know. But like, mm -hmm. no one ever knew, you know. Like it wasn't obvious. Like his sister didn't know, and like. She was texting the sister the whole time and being like, oh, I can't believe he's missing. Keep me updated. I'm so worried. I'm so sick. But the whole time, I believe it was like a Kmart. She knew that he had parked in that Kmart parking lot and that he was dead. And she's sitting there fucking talking to his family. How like, many days was the car, was he missing for? A day. Oh. It was, he wasn't missing long. Oh. He was, it was unlike was him. They, they have security. Well, the mom was already worried because it was unlike him not to come home. Mm-hmm. So when everybody found out that he wasn't there. Mom knows when something's wrong. Yeah. That's not fun. So. I, yeah, it's not fun. That's the poor s story. And what you say, dude, no matter what platform you say it on, affects motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. And just know that delete button it's only there to abuse you. It really, truly fucking is. And I hope everybody realizes that, that that delete 
It's just to appease your fucking heart. Yeah, I've had police officers. Every text message you've ever sent. Mm -hmm. Every <laughs> porn site you went to. Every back road, dirty, nasty fucking shit you looked up. <laughs> everything, bro. None of that. Every picture you took. And you're like, ah, it's deleted. No, it's fucking not. It's not. So, what you say can and will be held against your dumb asses. When and if someone comes to you, and I've lost someone very near and dear to me to suicide. Mm -hmm. And the thought that someone could have been encouraging him and egging him on to take such a sweet and precious and loving and such an amazing... Who's just a kid? 18? Yeah. Oh like, it's just horrible. Ah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're I fine. But, like, emotional. it's just... It's horrible. And to think that someone could encourage someone to do that is just mind-fucking. Mm -hmm. And I just can't believe it. Like, yeah, dude, and for, I don't know if anybody truly ever was on her, like, her side, except for, like, the dude that she was paying to say he was. Because, like, how, honestly, lawyer? yeah, like, mm -hmm. honestly, look at that. From every aspect, as your, as a friend, as your own child, as a brother, a sister, to know that someone could do that and then invade your home. And invade your family and put themselves in your lives when they helped cause the action whether or not Conrad would have committed suicide on his own we will never know that is now something we will never know what we do know mm. is that he attempted to not because he got out of the truck he got out of that truck and was told to get back in well, you can turn your phone off. You and know, that's really what that you bit. pray for. Oh but sadly, that wasn't the case. And it's just horrible. And the fact that she honestly sat there and thought to herself, like, I am, why am I in trouble? Blows my mind. The fact that her parents <laughs> sat there and were like, what do you mean she's a bad person? Uh -huh. Are you kidding me? You have to look at your child at one point in time. When they are reading these messages. This isn't shit someone just made up and told you. Yeah. You're in court. It's highlighted. People are reading this shit aloud to you just in case you can't read that good. Mm -hmm. It's being read aloud. And you're reading what your daughter said. And you can still leave court that day being like, well, what did she do wrong exactly? Mm. What the fuck's wrong with you, bro? Yeah, how is that normal? Now tell me if Conrad, if it was the other shoe on the other foot, you'd want him dead. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? 25 years, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Years. Shit would be months. different. Yeah. Shit would be way different if it was the other fucking way around. Ugh. So it's heartbreaking and devastating, and this poor mama just, you know, she didn't get to see her baby. She didn't get to say goodbye. You know what I mean? She didn't fucking know. She didn't know, and it just breaks my heart. And this poor sister, dude. I love my siblings, but man, you fuck with me, and you do some shit like that. Like, I, I feel bad for people that go through it. I really do. Suicide is no joke. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I've lost someone very near and dear. Not a joke. And it's just sad. And if someone ever reaches out to you, and I know this is, it's common for this friend to be the one who does it a bit. You know what I mean? You know, everybody's like, oh, Sally's dramatic. Let's Sally might coffee. fucking do it one day. So let's fucking go talk to Sally. Yeah. Let someone else know that she's fucking slipping. You know what I mean? Be a decent fucking human being is all this really comes down to. Yeah. Be a what decent kind of fucking human, human being. Does that? I, I just, you, you ruined my whole day. Yeah. Because she's going to be getting out soon. Yeah. Actually, I remember this case a while ago, and I thought it was years, not months. That's... <coughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's heartbreaking, dude. It's so devastating. She's... And to be that family, and then to know that, like, she is. She is going to get to be married. She's going to get to have kids. and. So can she make, can she sell her story and still get attention and money out of this? No. You promise? It's a law. Okay. 
She shouldn't be able to. I don't know, though. Don't well, she know. writes it in another country, all sneaky and stuff. Because she does not deserve any more attention at all. I don't know. I, I can't. I, I know. She gets to be out. And that, that kid, kid, yeah. who would be 20 today. Come and the text on. messages are so sad, dude, because he's really just asking for help. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's reaching out for help. Can and you then drive gets, the two hours and come talk to me or something? It got led the wrong direction, sadly, and it's just horrible. <sighs> and I couldn't imagine those poor parents and what they went through and knowing that he literally sat there and cried. He was in so much pain in that truck. And she didn't give a fuck, and she sat there and listened to him die. Blows my mind. You're a horrible piece of shit. Worthless. I don't even can't. Like, I don't. Wow. Yeah. WT fucking F. Wow. Yeah. But anyway, guys, we're out of time for today. So, anyway, follow us on Instagram. It is what it is. Pod 19. All one word. Facebook. It is what it is. A true crime story. And now, thank goodness if you just type my name in the search bar my podcast will pop up and all that fun shit so yeah follow us there follow us on twitter it is 208 because that's where we're from sorry people it's my mom i didn't fucking mute my phone anyway so yeah facebook group facebook page once again i'm so sorry i'm sick and i sound like shit and i'm sniffling and a gross blah do you want some soup no okay but I just love you guys, and I didn't want you guys to not have an episode, so I did it because I like you. Yeah. So I won't fucking be mad at me. Well, have a pajama day tomorrow and feel better. Right? Yeah. We'll come at you on fucking Tuesday. See you guys. See you.